Good afternoon, everyone. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, I want to begin by reiterating that our thoughts remain with the two officers who are in the hospital uh, after being shot yesterday. I had the opportunity to visit with them last night. Uh, thank God they are recovering and will recover, and thank God they will make a full recovery. Um, I've had the chance today to speak with the governor, and I, he also sends his thoughts uh, to those officers. Um, I want to commend the work of all of the law enforcement officers, including those of all the agencies represented behind me, um, and several who will speak today um, for their tremendous work in helping apprehend the suspect. Um, this investigation is being led by the Essex County Prosecutor's Office in Newark, and I'll let them give you the details. But let me just reiterate something that, unfortunately, we say far too often. Gun violence is and remains an epidemic in this country, and it remains an epidemic in the state of New Jersey. And we're doing everything we can to combat that epidemic. But it takes the work of the women and men who work for those folks behind me who show up every day to keep our state and our community safe, including this great city. And two officers yesterday showed up to work to do their job and unfortunately were shot in the line of duty. But also six individuals, including those two officers across our state, were shot last night. And it's that steady drumbeat of violence that we are working so hard to eradicate. Fortunately, gun violence has declined in New Jersey over this year, but even one person shot, especially a law enforcement officer, is too many. And so I commend the work of everyone who shows up every single day to keep our community safe. And I hope that this tragedy is a reminder of how much work we have left to do. With that, I'll turn it over to Essex County Prosecutor Ted Stevens to continue the briefing. Thank you, General. Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm joined by a tremendous assemblage of our law enforcement partners on a local, state, and a federal level. Most notably, we want to thank General Platkin for being here today and honoring us with his presence. Uh, you should know that the general is here after spending seven-plus hours with us uh, last night during the initial stages of this investigation. And we're honored, and we thank him for his presence there as well. As I said, after the seven-plus-hour multi-agency search last night, today, at approximately 11.10 a.m., members of the Newark Police Department emergency response team effected an arrest of one Kendall Howard. Mr. Howard has been charged with two counts of attempted murder of Newark police officers and additional counts for unlawful possession of a weapon and unlawful possession of a weapon for unlawful purposes. Now, first and foremost, we are relieved to announce that the two officers who were shot are in stable condition and are expected to have a full and complete recovery. Going forward, this is an ongoing investigation if there ever was one. We very recently received uh, and obtained a search warrant to search for additional evidence, which we're sure will provide everything we need to move forward with this case. Now, obviously, as I said, we're at the initial stages of this investigation, so we're not going to be able to say too much more. And because of the cast around me, we're not going to be able to let everyone come to the mic and to give a, their rendition of what happened last night and to basically thank 
everyone for their participation, but we thank each and every person here uh, behind me. But it, we would be remiss not to have members of the great city of Newark uh, speak, and we're going to start with the uh, police director from the city of Newark, Fritz Frage. Good afternoon. First, I'd like to express thanks to the federal partners that assisted in this investigation and in the arrest, which is the FBI, HSI, Homeland Security Investigators, U.S. Marshal's Office, U.S. Secret Service, and the multitude of local police departments like Jersey City, Elizabeth Pol Police Department, for assisting in this investigation. It truly shows the collaboration of law enforcement to fight crime. As I've always said before, Criminals don't have jurisdictional boundaries, neither should law enforcement. The continued collaboration between law enforcement agencies to conduct these investigations is important, and that's what's going to help keep the citizens of this city, the entire country, safe. In reference to two officers that were shot in this incident, both of them are doing well. Both have 1.5 years on the job. 1.5 years, and they have to deal with a traumatic incident like this. One will be released, released today out of the hospital. The other will have to recover a couple more days, but they should be expected to have a full recovery, which is important to us. Lastly, I want to thank the heroic efforts of the officers that came to the aid of the officers that were shot, especially the civilian that came to the aid of the officers while they were shot. Shots being fired, we can see and hear the shots being fired, and they're there bending over trying to drag this officer to safety. This is the true collaboration and the support that we have from the community. That's what we've been trying to mend the past several years to help build the trust between law enforcement and the communities that we serve. That's right, these are the communities that we serve. Those heroic actions should be commended. And lastly, I want to definitely say congratulations to our two chiefs. Chief Mitch McGuire of Essex County Prosecutor's Office and Chief Emmanuel Miranda, instrumental in this entire process. We sat there together, discussed this investigation and how we're going to go forward, but I have to give those remarks on how extraordinary and exemplary they displayed their efforts to bring this conclusion. Now I'd like to introduce our mayor, Baraka. Thank you. Thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, when I went to uh, bed last night, um, I got home after leaving the hospital around 11 p.m. I was extremely concerned about what residents felt uh, as they went to sleep uh, about a person that may be at large in their community in their neighborhood who just shot and tried to kill two police officers. Uh, I was glad in, in the morning, finally, uh, that he was brought into custody. It was a relief for many families in a neighborhood that I actually live in. Uh, and a relief for citizens across the city of Newark uh, who felt like the police did their job and did it well. I want to thank all of the agencies, federal, state, county, uh, that participated in this. Our general, General Plackin, who, as was said, was there with us uh, throughout the evening. Uh, and, and all of the tremendous support we got from residents, the residents who lived there, the residents from the building, uh, the woman who got out of her car, uh, and tried to stop the bleeding of an officer and help drag him to safety uh, in the middle of what might have been a gunfight. Uh, this goes against all of the narratives that people put out there nationally and statewide about police and community. Uh, our residents in Newark uh, have shown several times over and over again that they're willing to put themselves in the way of police and harm. Uh, and work collaboratively with the police department to make sure we bring people who are violating the law to justice. Uh, I want to also speak to the family members of the police officers who are probably uh, relieved that they are okay, but still dealing with the anxiety of getting that call that their son uh, was shot in the line of duty. Uh, we thank you uh, for your, your, your gratitude. We thank you for your support. Uh, for your for, for, for your presence uh, and for lean, loaning us uh, your family members to come out here and protect 311,000 residents who they probably don't even know. Uh, we, we thank you uh, and we are so grateful that they're able to walk out of that hospital alive and well 
in order to do this again. So uh, I'm, I'm just ecstatic that we have uh, brought at least some level of closure uh, and to some extent to this. Uh, and I want to thank again all of the partners that are behind us that helped make this possible today. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just one final uh, group of thanks uh, for individuals need to be thanked. Uh, in addition to Chief McGuire, which, who Director Fraget did uh, point out, I want to thank also the attorneys, the assistant prosecutors here on the direction of First Assistant Ramesh Sugdeo, uh, especially uh, AP Goldberg and Alex Albu, uh, both who were extremely instrumental in moving quickly last night and getting the p process needed to move forward. And lastly, uh, our ever-present law enforcement partners from the Essex County Sheriff's Department, they are always with us, and they do tremendous, tremendous work. So um, they are our partners uh, every day, and so we thank them for their participation as well. Um, we're available to have some very brief questions, um, and we'll get started. Unfortunately not. Um, we are in the midst of this long and a very arduous investigation, um, so we're not able to determine fully what's happened. We have him in custody, and we're speaking with him now, so hopefully we'll have that uh, information very shortly. Can you tell us where he was found in the building, and what kind of, did he offer any resistance upon his arrest? What were the circumstances of his arrest, and did he get arrested, charged with Okay. Um, he was uh, at the residence, uh, the location, where the, the shooting took place, he was taken from there. Uh, in terms of anything else, that's still part of the investigation going forward, um, including the weapon, all evidence at this point. We just recently received a search warrant where we're going to be searching for additional evidence that certainly will be made available once it's known. Prosecutor, can you be more specific about the civilians and exactly what they did to help police officers, and can you identify them at this time? Well, we know we don't want to, uh, with privacy indications and, and with uh, just the, the Internet to date, uh, we really don't want to uh, put too many names out there. But, but let me just say this. Uh, it's individuals like that, like this young, this young, young woman, I'm a, we'll call her a young woman. She probably will not be offended if I do that. Uh, but that sh that's what makes this job gratifying for anybody up here. Because everybody here works as hard as we can to put uh, the public in a good position. And when a good Samaritan, who's not their job, but they find as their duty to really come forward and assist in that environment, that makes it all worthwhile. And um, you may not know her name now, but I, I think um, in the near future um, we'll, she'll be made known because she mm -hmm. deserves a, um, uh, a great thanks for her efforts. Can you tell us anything about the previous shooting on October 28th? No, we can't do that. Can you talk about the search? You said you guys searched that property, the building, for more than seven hours last night. Uh, obviously, you didn't find anything, but you went back to that building this morning. Were you, did you guys go back because you had a hunch you might still be in the building when you took off? Uh, that you might be somewhere hiding in the apartment? Well, just to be clear, the seven hour period was one involving not only just a search, but there were residents in that building who had to be evacuated. It's an 80-some unit building, I'm led to believe, so that that takes uh, a number of hours in and of itself just to keep uh, the public safe. As I indicated last night, the, whatever number of hours it took to ensure the residents of Newark were going to be safe in terms of any police or law enforcement activity, that's what we were going to uh, undertake. So, um, that, so it was a combination of keeping the public safe and doing a search. In terms of the, uh, the building itself, that was still a uh, active crime scene. So so it's not unusual for law enforcement to uh, not release that building, so to speak, and to go back and forth, depending, looking for additional evidence. But this is a situation where you guys may have overlooked him or he maybe snuck back in in the wee hours of the morning. Well, I'm, I'm not at liberty to speak about the particulars of the investigation at this time. So if you is he a resident? Is he a tenant Building and the one next door. Can you talk any further about complaints you received, or just long-term 
I'm not aware of anything with regard to that. that. That will be part of the investigation. If that evidence is there or information, we'll certainly uh, gather that. But I have nothing uh, that's been presented to me to indicate that he was living there, squatting there a long periods of time. That's just not something that I have and I can speak definitively about. So at this point, you don't know if he was a tenant of that that, that That's all part of the investigation. So what, how old well, we know that he was arrested there, so we're going back to look for evidence. Well, I cannot, but if you have the name of those residents who indicate they spent the night with him, please present that so that we can, that we can interrogate them as well. We'd love to speak with them. came to a conclusion in less than 24 hours, as far as I know, without any uh, additional injuries to other than the unfortunate, heinous injuries to the officers. Uh, those are the kind of uh, results that we want without anybody else getting injured. Uh, policing is tough work. Law enforcement is tough work. And these are difficult situations, and these officers put their lives on the line every single day. And if we can limit it, it it's, as I said, terrible as it is that they get shot, I'm so grateful that no one else got hurt. So I'm, I'm pleased with that part of the result. Right. If, if people made complaints about the landlord, they should have made complaints to code enforcement. And code enforcement takes care of violations of the building. They don't take care of people who may be squatting, if that's the case. But we had no reports at all, zero, about anybody squatting uh, in that building, not one. So uh, if you have those people, as the prosecutor said, be glad to have a conversation with them. Uh, no, not at this time. You have one more question you've been waiting, and then we're done. The initial encounter, were the police serving a warrant for the suspect, or were they just looking to talk to him? Uh, I, that's unclear right now as to whether or not there was a warrant that was being um, – so there's no, no indication that there's a warrant, I'm, I'm told, so that, correct. Yeah, with attempt to identify the individual um, for whatever reason, and officers just doing what officers do, which is observe and, and to act. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.